What's up everyone, welcome back to Workshop Rebuild. As you may know, I finished up a restoration on a John Deere 400 garden tractor and this John Deere 35 rototiller came with the John Deere 400 as well as the PTO conversion kit down below. In today's episode, I'll share with you guys an overview on these components right here and then I'll dig into the disassembly process. When I purchased the John Deere 400 gun tractor, the previous owner didn't even tell me anything about the rototiller. This is a John Deere 35 rototiller and it has the PTO conversion kit that hooks up to the gearbox right there. Um, the John Deere 400 is a 2000 RPM PTO uh, that is belt driven mechanically by the engine and it transfers power to the front of the conversion kit right there. That drive shaft transfers the power to this little gearbox and the output shaft right there will give us 840 rpms to the rototiller there so i'm going to share with you guys the front part of the rototiller we have three points over here the top point is for our top link the top link is adjustable and that will allow us to angle our rototiller the two bottom points are for our lift arms on the three point hitch and they will hook up right here and over there so those are the three points on this rototiller and then we have a drive shaft this is telescoping i have one more part which is right over there on the table that has been previously rebuilt that part specifically mounts to our pto conversion kit on that spline there is a quick attach mechanism that telescoping shaft inserts onto the longer part of the drive shaft right here this is hooked up to a gearbox the gearbox is mounted right under this plate here uh, we can add or fill our oil uh, through this little port. And there is this little bracket which will allow us to hook up our chain for our front cover. The front cover on this rototiller is right on the side. I took it off just so you guys will be able to see the tines of this rototiller. So now looking at the gearbox from this side, you will notice that the shaft comes in straight and it turns off 90 degree to the right side of this rototiller. They have this little guard right here. So if I take this off, all I have to do is pull on it forward and turn it a little bit and lift it up. And this is the profile of this guard. So there's a little latch where we can hook it up to down below. That is a welded on piece. So that just inserts right there. And then we have two nuts which will go onto these two studs. Now you guys will see the shaft coming out of the gearbox going to the right side of the rototiller. We will have a sprocket right here and another one down below. And within this guard, we will have our chain drive. So this is a chain driven rototiller and that is hidden right behind this cover. And I'll get to that very soon once we start dismantling this. Now that chain drive mounts to another sprocket and that sprocket is hooked up to our main shaft for all our tines. Each little section has four tines. So from right to left, we have 36 tines in total. And I do know I saw one broken one on the left and one on the right. So I will have to replace two tines. And these still look like they're in fair condition. I wouldn't say they're new, but as you guys will see, they still have a little bit of life left in them and I will probably not change them if they can still do a little bit of yard work. There are four bolts and a flange on the very end and there's probably a bearing right there so that will be removed later on. But I will focus on the top end of this rototiller first. The chain drive and the tines will be last as well as the main shaft. Down below for the PTO conversion kit, um, this is still very greasy. Uh, you guys will notice the yoke might have to be uh, cleaned up as well as the quick attach which hooks up to our PTO on the garden tractor. Uh, then over here, the yoke actually just uh, gets mounted with a little spring pin to our PTO converter. Now this part right here, when we look at this PTO conversion kit from the side, uh, this drops in onto these slots. There are two pins on the John Deere 400. And then we have these two spring-loaded pins, which will then uh, go into place just like that. 
and this locks everything into place. So this is basically an additional part or an option for your garden tractor. So you can just pop this on. When we look at it from the other side right here, you will see that this output shaft is splined and there is a little recess right here for the quick attach. This is a plate, very thick actually, and it has a little hitch on it as well. So uh, I think this plate is also an option that would just have this little hitch on it. But this is also set up for our PTO, which will drive our rototiller. I gave you guys a quick overview on the rototiller and the PTO conversion kit. Now I'll give you guys a time lapse on the disassembly process of the rototiller, and then we'll have a good look at the PTO conversion kit. So stick around. I'll post a disassembly video right here. I have the rototiller flipped around on that little cart and I tried turning it over by hand and it didn't go too well. So let me give you guys a close up view on that. Rototiller is flipped around. You guys will see the main shaft with all the tines mounted to it. On the left side, we have one bearing and on the right side, we have another bearing. Uh, those are mounted to the main housing of this rototiller. And then on the left, we still have a little extension of the main shaft, which is splined which will allow us to mount the sprocket for the chain drive. But I wanted to turn this over by hand just to have a good feeling of these bearings. And it's really stiff. I'm not going to say it's seized, but it's really hard to turn this thing over. And that's not really good for bearings. As you guys know, bearings should turn over very easily. Uh, yes, there is a little bit of load on the shaft, but those bearings are meant for this application. And this just doesn't turn over well. Like, 
I really have to put a lot of effort into this to turn it over. And uh, if those bearings would be new, they should just turn over with one finger. And I can clearly not do that right here. So uh, my best bet would be to change both bearings on this main shaft. And I just wanted to share that with you guys before I take this apart, because uh, if I would rebuild a tractor like the John Deere 400, and then I would just uh, slap this onto the garden tractor, um, that 20 horsepower engine would probably not even be able to turn this over uh, since it's so stiff, that means the bearings are not good. So on the left side, you will see there is a bearing and then towards the inside, we have a little bit of metal residue actually. This might have even came off the bearing. This is the main shaft with all the tines on it. And then off to the far side, we have another bearing. Uh, there is a little set screw right down there, which I have to loosen up so I can take the shaft out. But this little flange holds the bearing in place. I already took the other half off, but this flange will come off to the side. I've been trying to get these bearings off on the rototiller and on both sides, the bearings are not completely seized, but they are seized to the shaft. So the bearing is moving within the flange, that is the outer race, but the inner race is seized to the shaft of this rotor tiller. I've been hitting it from the inside, but there's not much room over here. Uh, so I'll go ahead and heat the bearing race, which is the inner race. I'll heat that up and see if it will expand. Once it expands a little bit, hopefully, I can hit it from inside. If that doesn't work, I'm just going to add a whole bunch of penetrating fluid and uh, leave it overnight and try the next day. As you guys saw, I was dealing with both bearings on either side of the rototiller. I have not had any success whatsoever. I've heated it up. I've added a whole bunch of penetrating oil and it just does not want to move. It's really seized on the main shaft. So I'll have to add some more penetrating oil throughout the evening. And then hopefully tomorrow when I come back, I can remove those bearings. I will probably not feature it in this video. Uh, if I do the assembly video on this, I might just share a glimpse of how I did take it apart. That might be valuable for you if you would like to rebuild your rototiller as well. But for now, let me head over to the PTO conversion kit and deal with that. On the little table, I have the PTO conversion kit with the drive shaft. Off to the left is a sprocket and the chain still from the rototiller. But this is actually a guard for this PTO conversion kit that will bolt on right here on four bolts. Uh, I still have to straighten this out a little bit and sand it and then prime it and paint it. But in the meantime, I will be working on this. I will loosen off all these bolts around the perimeter so I can open it right along the seam. Uh, there is one seal close to this shaft, which is the output shaft. And the input shaft also has a seal down below. And I just had it sitting on its side before. And as you guys can see, it's leaking. Um, I think it's leaking just on the seam or possibly on one of these bolts. That means it's not sealed properly. Um, so I will have to focus on this. I will open it up and see what's inside. Hopefully um, it looks good inside and then I can close it back off. Uh, I will be using gasket material and I might even use a little bit of silicone to close this off. Uh, and then I think that should be good. I will also focus on this U-joint right here. So I'm gonna have to pop out that spring pin. And on the other side of the drive shaft, I will check out this yoke and right here we have a little quick attach as you guys will see this does not even return um, so i will be taking this apart and cleaning that up so let's get right to it
So the PTO conversion kit is laid out right here in this tray. I usually use trays on a table uh, when something gets oily or very messy. I can just scoop out all the oil or debris in a tray like this. So now we have two housing halves from the PTO conversion kit. We have our smaller sprocket down below and a bigger sprocket which goes up above. As you will see, there is a needle bearing on the back side of the housing and on the front side of the housing. This shaft is the splined shaft. So this will be, a, this will be our output shaft for the rototiller. And this shaft is a keyed shaft which hooks up to our main drive shaft coming from the PTO. Now within this housing, we have two shafts, as you can see, and two sprockets. One is smaller and one is bigger. This will convert our 2000 RPM PTO up to 840 RPMs. That is coming off the bigger sprocket right there. Now the chain is our drive mechanism between these sprockets to secure these two shafts within these housings. We have these little spacers. As you can see down below, this was brazed in the past, so somebody must have had this open. And as you can see around this needle bearing, there is also a brazed weld around, and we have a machine surface afterwards. So they must have welded it and machined it afterwards, and somebody did a fairly good job right here. I'm not quite sure. When I look at it down below, it looks like the chain was dragging right there. Maybe the original sprocket, which this probably isn't, um, they also put a weld around this sprocket and they only welded it on one side. This side does not have a weld, so I assume there was something wrong with the sprocket. Uh, maybe even the shims or the spacers between the sprocket and the housing went bad. And this chain looks to be in pristine condition, so somebody fixed it in the past. But either way, there is also one more part. We have a chain tensioner right here. Uh, this side of the chain tensioner seems to be just fine. When we look at the bottom side, it is a little bit worn, but this is identical on both sides. So I could actually flip it around and use the other side to put back into this conversion kit. Looking at some of the other parts, we still have the guard. We have a whole bunch of bolts which came off of the perimeter of the housing. And these bolts also held the housing to this little quick hitch bracket here. Uh, so that will have to be cleaned up and everything right here within this tray will be cleaned up and ready for the assembly video. As for the drive shaft, I took apart the quick attach right here. There are three bearing balls in there and there's one C-clip. I took that apart, gave it a good clean with the wire brush, uh, put it back together with some assembly grease and it works just like new again. Now I'm going to have to clean the telescoping part of this drive shaft. So there's this part right here and the internals right here. So that will all have to be cleaned up. Uh, this will get prepped for some paint and primer, so that will be done very soon as well. But all of this will be showcased in an assembly video, which will be the upcoming video. You guys just saw me take apart the PTO conversion kit. As you know, it was leaking. Uh, I did open it up and it looks like somebody already had their hands in there. It looks like already somebody fixed it uh, in the past. So everything does look healthy inside. It was just leaking, so I will have to reseal it. I believe I can reuse everything that I took apart, but it will have to be resealed. Uh, as for the drive shaft, that looks very healthy. The U-joints will be freed up and that should be ready to go. But right in front of me, the rototiller is giving me a hard time. Both bearings on either side of this rototiller are seized to the main shaft. Uh, those are those special bearings for snowblowers or rototillers. Um, they have a flange on either side of the bearing. If this shaft wouldn't sit properly, um, you can adjust it on either side. Uh, those bearings are seized to the shaft right now. I'm going to have to add a whole bunch of penetrating fluid throughout the evening. And then tomorrow I'll come back and work on it again. If I do free these up, I will give you guys footage in the assembly video of this rototiller. I just won't be able to share it within this video. So stick around for an upcoming assembly video on this rototiller. And also an assembly video on the PTO conversion kit.